I'm Dr. Laura Berman, and I am joined on Uncovered Radio with Rachel Hunter, beautiful inside and out. And we met actually uh, <laughs> at a Kundalini dance class. Yeah. Uh, because you, in addition to many other things, are trained. Are you mm. trained in Kundalini in general or in Kunda dance? Or No, I actually went off. Um, I've done yoga for about 16 years. And and you spent a lot of time in India. I spent a lot of time after the fact when my mum passed away, I decided to really go. And that's a whole other conversation yeah, we're going to do. But about. I ended up going into to India. Now, I did not go to train as a yoga teacher. Um, but what I learned in there was um, very transformational for me. And I went back and then I spent literally the last year and four months in India um, in the Himalayas confronting so much stuff wow um and we'll continue to go to india because um it is my soul as far as food is concerned is very fit Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. there and yeah you spend a lot of time there yeah you have a lot of teachers there and you've done retreats there and that really is like a spiritual home away from home for you it seems like Mm. and so you went there because we, because I want to talk to you about sort of you've really been and you credit the death of your mom, which I also credit the beginning of a big transformation in my mm-hmm. life with the death of my mom as the catalyst. Um, what when did your mom pass away? She passed away in two thousand seventeen, May two thousand seventeen. Ah, okay, so yeah, mine was around two thousand eleven, eleven mm-hmm. or twelve. Um, but it is, it is earth shattering Mm. i think for anyone but especially you know for certain kinds there's something about the mother-daughter relationship and so i want to talk about your story because we talk a lot about grief Mm. and a lot of like what happens after someone who you're so deeply connected to karmically emotionally you know psychologically and physically what can happen with that loss and so tell us about that journey for you well, it was very, very fast, and there's lots of different details that go into it, but bottom line is, is I spent the last um, year um, before mum passed with her um, watching her die, basically, mm-hmm. um, and it was probably one of the most beautiful um, um, processes mm-hmm. or um, that I've ever gone through in my life to be there um, during that time. And there's that pivotal moment because if we're we're in a human state and you're a part of a family and a group, we have become mm-hmm. ultimately selfish. Yeah. And we go, well, who's going to look after yeah. this person? Yeah, yeah. Who's, you know, who was who's sick at the time? responsibility, right. And because I was where I was, my career wasn't, you know, was still going well, but I had time. I was like, I need to go down and look after mum. My sister was very um, much, it was it's still in her job. She needed to keep her job. And that's the thing is, is during death, um, stay in your lane and yes. your grief. Yes. Because you know what? It is so hard for that person who does have to stay back and work and they I can't know, fully I be know. there and it's the person so that hard. gives up. So there's this whole there's kind all these of dynamics dance that happens. Yes. Um, and everyone's feeling not enough and everyone's feeling oh, guilty and everyone's feeling and resentful. And the best thing we did was what Jackie, what my sister identified with her process and what mine was, was very different. And I would sometimes get agitated and she would get agitated. So we came up with this. This, well, I came up with this idea of as soon as that conversation, our conversation hit the sweet spot of pivotal of either getting into an argument or crying or whatever. Well, crying wasn't so bad because yeah. that's that's fine. But um, we came up with this one word. Mine was unicorns and hers was another word. And it would <laughs> we would just fall over laughing <laughs> instead of getting into these oh, confrontations. Oh, you're so lucky that you you're know? both willing to do that because I don't, you know, you have to that's both a- have a certain level yeah. of connection and emotional health because it will tear a family apart dealing with that kind of crisis it's and and you really i mean i was with my mom through her 
I mean, she had a very quick, she had been battling cancer and was fine. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, all of a sudden was terminal in Mm -hmm. December and by March was gone. But those months between December and March, I was still working full time, but I was there every weekend and I was Mm -hmm. often doing my radio show from the den in her house. (laughs) But I was with her, especially the final weeks. And it Mm -hmm. was unbelievably beautiful. I mean, terrible, Mm -hmm. beautiful. Yeah, terrible. But, yeah, but beautiful and transformational and deep and um, and intense. Yeah, and and that's that's what interests me a lot is that all of a sudden it's a surprise that people die. Yeah, that it's not seen. A beautiful becomes a very weird word to discuss death with because we, as a certain society and culture, yeah, we're scared of it. Are very scared of it. Mm-hmm. Other places in the world celebrate it. Yeah. And and see this beautiful, and I have seen those processes, and it is especially in India such yeah. celebration and yeah. so the chanting, the music done twenty four seven in Varanasi. I mean, it is really yeah. truly an honor. Like when you yes. see this, yes. And for us, if I'm honest, it becomes more. It becomes about them. You get to the place yes. of selflessness, but at the same time, you become you go through the process of like, I've lost my mother. So it becomes selfish too. And so there's this whole dynamic that you have to get rid of. I watched mum, my sister watched mum. We were there when she passed. And the last thing I wanted was her to, because I had her ear when she was passing. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I was not over the top of her because energetically, yeah, Someone over the top of me is yeah, really yeah, yeah. confronting. Whereas off I, to the I side, I did that side. with my mom. Yeah, too. You, be, you become your subtle body. You become very out of your own. You move out of your own way, and, and they you get say, into the and subtle they body say of that, that you. Person. The hearing is the last to go. Yeah. So I was doing the same thing to my mom. I wanted. I tell me what you were saying, and I'll tell you what I was saying. I bet it's similar. Well, I just wanted her to know that she was doing a beautiful job and passing yeah. through and that, you know, that um, to to pass through with, you know, honor and love and and, and to really have no stress related to, yeah. I was not going, don't worry about, you know, me, we're going to be okay. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. because I don't want that as my life. I mean, you know, <laughs> like you was- Fuck, I'm dying. We'll be fine. You're Go me? ahead. You're talking about yourself and you're going to yes. be okay? No shit. I'm no, dying. But, but no, I do I think – that's okay. You, you can know? curse on this. But I do think that – because I, I was thinking the same thing with my mom, but I did say I knew that she was really worried – that we weren't going to be okay and that that was part of what was making it hard for her to go. go, And so I just said, you you know, you don't have to worry about us. So I definitely said, you don't have to worry. You know, Mm -hmm. we're going to take care of dad, which is what she was most worried about, but also that you can let go. And I knew the other thing she was really worried about was that she hadn't left her mark. Like that was a thing with her. And I just kept saying, you know, we'll forever speak your name. You're never going to be forgotten. You know, Mm. you can let go. But it is powerful. And then I was reading her favorite poem, which was Thanatopsis, about going back to the Mm -hmm. earth and singing the songs she used to sing to me. I was just like doing whatever I could to be with her because I was imagining... You know, the in-between state, she seemed really uncomfortable. At a certain point, she became comfortable. Yeah. But it's hard because it's it's powerlessness at its most intense, right? Watching someone, probably watching someone come into the world and watching someone leave the world is the ultimate form of surrender. Right? Yeah, it is. And, you know, mom and I were very, she was very, very spirit, spiritual. She was very psychic. And um, we grew up. Um, born again, Buddhist, Mormon. Wow. So we grew up with, you know, fairies in the garden to n- organic so-called food that we talk about now. It wasn't right. organic food. It was normal food. We would eat carob instead of chocolate. Yes. Um, yeah, we did that too. So, so the, she was <laughs> very, very connected to the spirit world. Um, very, very connected. So we grew up with all that spirituality all along and she was an incredible painter she was incredible with anything spiritually related and the things she used to do were Hmm. exceptional and her and I had this 
incredible um, bond. And I think when we were spending the last weeks together, I said, Mum, what do you regret? And I cannot tell you if this even just t- takes a dent in you, in your soul, or gives your soul a kick. Mm-hmm. She goes, I never fully was who I wanted to be. Mm. I never walked in with my caftans. I never, you know, I I didn't say, you know, I was psychic or oh, I didn't, she didn't fully she didn't live wave in the truth. freak flag enough. And to, you know why? How many people? Yeah. A lot. And yeah. if it's not a wake up call, when she said that, she goes, she fully never stepped into who she fully wanted to be. Aww. Yeah. Um that was a pivotal moment of going, you know, what do I, you know, what do I want to do? What do I want to um, be? What do I, you know, where am I going yeah. in my life? What, you know, the integrity, like, you know, how do I really want to dress? And all these things. And, you know. It made all you people, revisit what was really well, everybody you. everybody posts yeah. all the shit online, yeah. to be honest, yeah. and quotes and everything. But until you actually experience, keyword, experience these things, yes. anyone can write a book, anyone can write yeah. a thing on so-called True. feelings, Google shit, write anything they want. <laughs> but the fact is, until you have experienced yes. stuff and emotions and, and anything that you're doing, like being a doctor, yes. you experience people's minds right. you see the reaction that gives you ultimate experience right. but even experiencing it myself i can tell you i mean that's my joke with my husband that i seem to have needed to experience just about i mean you name it as a woman yeah and i've probably experienced the track i mean i call them afges another freaking growth experience yeah. because they're they are these horrible tragic experiences that are going to happen in all of our lives mm-hmm. to differing degrees but that's what our that's like the catalyst for our transformation. So it sounds like for you, you know, those final, that final regret from your mom and that connection you had and that knowledge of her heart not being mm-hmm. realized really set you on a path to realize yours. And you've stepped into the spiritual realm a lot more, or at least openly. Yeah. A lot more. Well, yeah, openly. And that's the thing is I think, um, there's a, unless you fit into a certain bubble, you don't want it. A lot of people didn't want to talk about it, yes. but obviously now a lot of people can feel quite freely to talk about anything. Um, well, we do on Uncovered. I talk yeah. about it all the time. Yeah, and and uh, that was something that I always um, was very much. Um, I'm actually just writing a whole book on this that whole spiritual journey, um, right from when I was a child and how it applied <gasps> all the are? way through. Yeah. Because I was quite shocked at the, I mean, I've studied with witches in Salem, Massachusetts, yes. to all all sorts, and constantly seeking, and then really realizing that even now, um, which is very interesting, and, and you could foresee this. I think anyone in this in in this realm could see this that this was about to become mm-hmm. a popular topic, spirituality. Now, the funny thing is, is the attachment to the word spiritual now has become separate when there is no separate between being a human and, and being, being spiritual. Being. Like if yeah. you look at Well, human, some of us are cut it, off from it. But hold that thought because when we come back, this is what, so I want to talk about your spiritual, let's call them for lack of a better words, more metaphysical understanding of the world. world. I think of it as just like, how attuned we are beyond our five senses, mm. you know, because we're all attuned. We just don't all, we're not all in our bodies enough or cultivating it enough to really pick it up. So we're, when we come back, I want to talk about your spiritual practices and what you mm. believe these days and how you move through the world using that yeah. in service. Okay. okay. More of that with Rachel Hunter coming up. 